There are these two young fish swimming along, and they happen to meet an older fish swimming the other way, who nods at them and says, morning, boys, how's the water? And the two young fish swim on for a bit, and then eventually one of them looks over at the other and goes, what the hell is water? Most people suffer from arrested development. They stop developing themselves, they stop growing, they stop reaching, and they literally settle in and excite, accept life as it comes at them. But if you're worried that I plan to present myself here as the wise older fish explaining what water is to you younger fish, please don't be. I am not the wise old fish. The point of the fish story is merely that the most obvious, important realities are often the ones that are hardest to see and talk about. The last thing that we want to do in life is like, is become subject to the roles we place ourselves in. You know, um, we're, we're all so much, everyone in, in the world is bigger than the role that they think they need to play. You're not just a dad. You're not just a banker. You're not just a brother or a son or a, a convict. It doesn't matter. Like everyone is is bigger, much bigger, infinitely bigger than the roles they place themselves in, and is capable of reaching potential greater than anything they could imagine. I think that you know everyone in the world is pos is capable of living outside the role or beyond the roles that they place themselves in, no matter what it is. You know? We think we have a ceiling when it comes to our potential. And the and the real and the truth is that there is no ceiling. Just fit in with everybody else, dress like them, walk like them, act like them, eat like them, go where they go, think like they think, do what they do. And once you neutralize your uniqueness, you don't need courage. It takes courage to be different. It takes courage to go where you've never gone before, to get you outside of the bar. It takes courage to be successful. It takes courage to win. People don't talk about people that don't win. If you win, they're gonna talk about you. Do you have the courage to stand there though the storms keep raging and the people get to talking and you stand there and say, I've come too far to turn around. But the fact is that in the day-to-day -day trenches of adult existence, banal platitudes can have a life-or-death importance. Or so I wish to suggest to you on this dry and lovely morning. Judge a man not by what he has accomplished, but what had he had to overcome mm. for his accomplishment. You get to consciously decide what has meaning and what doesn't. You get to decide what to worship. When you get outside of what's familiar, yeah. what's comfortable, what feels right, and put yourself in a position beyond your comfort zone, yeah. that will give birth to a part of yourself that you don't know right now because in order to do something you have never done you've got to become someone you've never been we all have greatness within us but yeah. greatness is not our destiny it is a choice that we have to make consciously to put ourselves outside of our comfort zones mm. to stretch and to develop ourselves and have in our environment people we can learn from and grow from that will hold us to a higher standard and that will always challenge us to go higher. Do you have the courage? Do you have the courage to act outwardly on what you see inwardly? Or will you die a dreamer? Will you die on the verge and on the edge and in the land of coulda, woulda, and shoulda? 
It's the automatic way that I experience the boring, frustrating, crowded parts of adult life when I'm operating on the automatic, unconscious belief that I am the center of the world and that my immediate needs and feelings are what should determine the world's priorities. Uh, how many of us, I wonder, can recall that childhood moment when we experienced happiness as a state of being? That single moment of untarnished joy, that moment when everything in our world, inside and out, was all right. We become a colony of adults and everything is all wrong, all the time. <laughs> It's as if it, we were on a quest to get it back. And yet the more we focus on our own personal happiness, the, the more it eludes us. In fact, it's only when we are otherwise engaged. Oh no, we should concern ourselves not so much with the pursuit of happiness, but with the happiness of pursuit. The most powerful incentive I know is autonomy and growth. The sense that I become more, that I can give more, that I can create more. I always say to people, you know, if you want to know where happiness comes, I give it to you in one word, progress. Progress equals happiness. We're not supposed to sit at the table of success and just feel good about ourselves forever. What makes us feel alive is growing, and when we grow, we have something to give. I feel fear about this and therefore I shouldn't do it. It's normal to, be, to feel fear. See, if you're sitting on what you have, what you've been given, I think everybody's been given something to bring to the planet. Part of the process is seeing yourself being worthy, being capable, having what you need to make you a worthwhile person and that you deserve to be listened to or you deserve to have that dream and that passion and whatever it is that you see and envision there. You've got to see it in your mind's eye and know that you've got what it takes. I must see, I must see in my mind's eye, eye. See, myself see myself confronting my fears, confronting my fears. Handling, my fears. handling my fears. I'm more than able. they don't know what they're born to do, that they're somehow broken. And I think that it needs to be looked at differently, which is that it means if you don't know that thing, it means that every door is, is the possibility. I would still go home from whatever that day job is, and I would try to do it, because I love it, not because I really want to make a certain amount of money, if you can figure out the thing that makes you tick, um, find that thing. To try and figure out the thing that actually makes you want to get up in the morning, the thing that you actually love. I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in. It was forced upon me, I can't refuse it. I didn't seek it and I didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it, give account if I abuse it. It's only a tiny little minute but eternity is in it. I actually think I, I, think I fear, feel fear quite strongly. Um, so it's not as though I just have the absence of fear. I, I feel it quite strongly. Um, but there, there are just times when something is important enough, you believe in it enough, that you, you do it in spite of the fear. And deal with the pressure of maybe not making the amount of money that you would like to yet, or not getting to the company you'd like to yet, or not having success with your startup yet. These are all things that I think you can swallow if the thing you're doing speaks to you. And if you don't do that, if you're not filling in your life with your life work or your mission, then there are gaps in your life. 
And what we do when we're not living out our true identity, we begin to fill the gaps, we fill the holes with garbage. If you're not getting get rid of fear, then use fear. Use fear or it uses you, it's that simple. So you gotta say, okay, what's the price if I just stay doing this? What's the price? Turn fear on itself. Notice what I said, that we must give our permission to fear to immobilize us. Because whatever discomfort you experience, whatever challenges or difficulty that it is, you got to handle it. Got to go up in there and wrestle with it. Will it be easy? No. Will it be challenging? Yes. So when you begin to look at your life and you know that, that you're not doing what you can do because you have allowed yourself to be held captive by your fears, I'm 85 years old, I'm looking back on my life, and I say, I didn't do this, or I did. Didn't nobody warn you that it was gonna come down on you like this. That's called life. It's one of the things you find out that when you face your fears, it's not as bad as you think it is. But that's just what you must go through in order to get where you want to go. And guess what? You are strong enough to do it. You're strong enough and your life is worth whatever you have to go through. So deciding as you look at your life, as you look into the future and say, what fears am I holding on to? It takes courage to be exceptional. It takes courage to be wise. It takes courage to be rich. It takes courage to be educated. It takes courage to be knowledgeable. It takes courage to be successful. It is far easier not to be successful. Misery will always have company. Success breeds contempt. If you don't want to make waves, be mediocre. Be normal and fit in. Whatever you have to do, this dream you got, whatever you want to do, will it be easy to just run out there and do it? No. Will it happen overnight? No. Will it be a struggle? Yes. Will there be times when you can't make ends meet? Yes, that's a part of it. Will there be times you won't know what to do? Yes, that's a part of it. Will you have some opposition? Will things go wrong sometimes? See, when you accept yourself and you accept fear as a fact, that means that it's something that happens. It's something that you're going to experience, but it is not a force to hold you back. It doesn't have any special power other than that that you give it. Now, when you don't have a true appreciation and acceptance for who you are, and you allow yourself to be immobilized by fear, what happens in the process is that you begin to abuse yourself. You begin to sabotage your life, you begin to sabotage your dreams, you begin to unconsciously work against yourself. You become your own worst enemy. So you accept the fact that you are afraid and then you move on anyhow. You move on past it and you do whatever you've got to do. Are people who have the mental resiliency yeah. and the courage to face failure, that you will fail your way to greatness, mm. that most people allow their fear of failure, 80% allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. When you're willing to fail again and again and again, when you make up your mind to become unstoppable, when you make up your mind to become a no matter what person, 
then that will then give birth to a part of yourself that you don't know right now. And maintaining a, a spirit of optimism and challenging yourself and learning from your mistakes. Understand that the setback is a setup for a comeback. I focus on what is it I want to accomplish and I see myself achieving the victory. I see myself living from the dream, living from that place that I'm reaching for. What fears that I'm allowing to imprison me that's keeping me from breaking out, that's keeping me from living up to my true potential, that's keeping me from really being happy that's keeping me from having a sense of adventure and excitement in my life? What's, what's keeping me from controlling my destiny? What fears that I'm giving that permission to? Sometimes life will force you to become courageous. And so it's there that most of us don't develop our courage muscle. What do you want me to tell you? That it's gonna be a picnic? No, it's not. It's going to kick your butt? Yes, it is. All of us get in life what we are, not what we want. All of us are self-made, but only the successful will admit it. Imagination is the yeah. preview of what's to come. But most, most people rather moan and groan about their situation, show up in their lives as volunteer victims rather than become actively engaged in doing the work necessary to change their circumstances. It's been said there are two types of people, those who work and those who watch them. Are you going to give this the power to take advantage of you? Are you going to turn yourself over to this? We always have that choice. That's the greatest choice yeah. that human beings have. Am I going to give myself a pass to surrender or am I going to stand up? Two types of people, those who work and those who watch them. Most people settle in and accept things in life as it has been given to them, as opposed to rising above that, working to create something that they can feel good about. Why are you here? What's your reason for being? Why do you get up in the morning? Most people don't have a clue. Yeah, yeah. Pay the bills, keep a roof over your head. I think we have to reflect on who am I? Why am I here? What drives me? If I died today, what three words would I want said about me if I died today? You know, what is it that defines me? You know, and how, how do I define myself? Most people allow their circumstances to define as opposed to defining themselves and how they're going to show up in life. Through growth experiences, through challenges. If you go to the gym to work out and you don't feel any discomfort the next day, here's what we know. You haven't done anything. Mm. And so you got to challenge yourself. Yeah. And you're going to get hurt. And one of the things I emphasize that changing is not easy, that changing your life, changing habits, reinventing yourself, yeah. picking yourself up after life has knocked you flat on your back.
fact is that in the day-to-day -day trenches of adult existence, banal platitudes can have a life-or-death importance, or so I wish to suggest to you on this dry and lovely morning.